This video will be a complete guide for setting up events for Meta Ads. Setting up events is how you measure certain activity on your website through the Meta Ads platform, and it's vital to get this right if you want your ads to perform and to give you a great return on investment like we regularly achieve for our clients. We will walk you through the process of setting these events up step by step, and if you do this correctly, you'll only need to do it once. I'll explain how to track button clicks, page visits, and anything else that you want to track so you can achieve the results that you deserve. So let's jump into the laptop and I'll show you exactly how. Okay, so let's jump into the laptop here. And the first thing that I want to do is come to the ads manager platform as you can see here come down to here click on events manager if it's not there which it might not be for some people then click on all tools and it will be linked somewhere so let's go into events manager for this to work i need to be really clear that you have to have your pixel set up correctly and you have to have conversion api installed we don't have to have conversion api installed but that is something that we would absolutely recommend that you do because it makes everything to do with your tracking so much easier so then what you're going to do is click up here on your pixel which hopefully should be firing already and you're going to click here on manage integrations once you've clicked on manage integrations you could see your pixel installed here click manage and open event setup tool once you've done that click open and it will ask you to put a url in for this we are just just going to use my website because it's just a demonstration so that is lilacjames.com when you click open what it's going to do is open your website and it's going to open this dialogue box up here sometimes this might not appear and people get really frustrated with that. And what that means is there's some sort of breakdown in how your pixel is installed. What we recommend when you do this is just try and reinstall the pixel in a different way. So if you're using a plugin, hard code the pixel in. If you're hard coded, try and use a plugin. And that normally resolves the issue. Not every time you might have to troubleshoot that, but just try that as a first port of call. When we're in there, what I'm gonna do is press track new button. And you can see that all of the buttons that it identifies will be highlighted. So if, for example, I wanna track this button, which is how people can go through to our contact page, I click that, I select what I want it to display for, in this case, contact, and I would click confirm. I'm not gonna do that because these are already set up on our website. So that is really it. So if you have an e-commerce platform, what you're gonna want to do is go to the final page and you can navigate through your website as you please and the dialog box will appear. So let's say when I click this button that I want to track request of a free review, I would click that and I would just measure the event. Sometimes certain buttons won't display and that can often be because you're using a bit of third-party software that is loaded within what's called an iframe that's essentially a window on your website that is a window to another event which means you have to install the pixel on that third-party platform if you're using something like woocommerce it has to be integrated with woocommerce in order to see certain buttons because they might actually not be on your website although they're displayed there they'll be on a third party. What you can also do if these buttons aren't displaying, if you have a thank you page for when people make inquiries with your business or if people make a purchase through your business, you can set up a thank you page with a unique URL and you can click here to track a URL and you can select the event that you want. So it might be to complete a registration, for example. Then you have this part here, which is URL contains or URL equals. If you select URL contains, anything containing the URL as I've selected will fire the event. For example, if you're running a purchase event and that was lilacjames.com forward slash purchase forward slash, then you get a load of random code and numbers which is unique to each individual sale. You just want to do everything up until that random jumble of numbers and that will fire them for every purchase or every contact that you make. It is really that simple. Once you've come through the process, it's important that we click here on finish setup because that is truly, truly vital because if you don't do that, it won't work, it will not happen for you. What I would suggest is you map as many things as you possibly can because data is the true foundation of success to any Facebook marketing. So any events that are important, if you're on e-commerce, you want add to cart, you want initiate checkout, you want input of payment details and you want purchase as an absolute minimum. But you can also track phone number clicks. So like up here, you can also track email clicks, you can track 
thank you pages. There's all sorts of stuff that you can do. And you can also fire multiple events. You see here, I've got it set up. So if somebody clicks on my telephone number button to call the office, or they click on the email number, we are gonna fire for that contact event, which means we're gonna fire for all of the different ways somebody could possibly get in contact with our business. So you can have multiple things firing for the same event, but you have to get this right. If you don't get this right, Facebook is gonna look at your campaigns, it's gonna see lots of data that aren't particularly relevant, it's gonna optimize for the wrong things, and everything is gonna break down. Often when we look at poor performing campaigns, the very first thing that we look at is the tracking to see how effective that is going to be. One final thing that I'm gonna show you is to do with the URL parameters, which is vital for how you track, not just within Meta, but also Google Analytics 4, GA4. So let me dive into that. Okay, so this is just a dummy campaign that we have launched here. And what I'm gonna do is scroll right down. When you've got your destination website URL, it's really, really important that what you do is you build a URL parameter off the back of it. So if I'm driving people to my website, what I want to be doing here is then selecting the campaign name. This is how you build a URL parameter and I'll explain why this is vital. Then you might wanna put your ad set name, then your ad name. When I click apply, what you will see here is it has built a UTM parameter, a URL parameter. You can also do this in Google Developer Tools. There's another way to do it. It will work absolutely fine on Facebook. So what it means is when you log into Google Analytics, you can see your Facebook traffic data. Now, there won't be any because we're not running any campaigns at Lilac James at the moment, but I will show you how you can see that data. So what it means is when you come into your normal traffic volumes, what it means is when you come into acquisition and you go to traffic acquisition and you have a look at your session data, your traffic analysis from Meta is sort of mixed in with all of this. So it's kind of inorganic social, it's inorganic search. You know, it just gets mixed up. The Google Analytics 4 struggles to interpret it. But if you were to click here and then you were to click on session source medium, what you would then see is you can see that here we've done it for some of the traffic from our YouTube channel. And you can see that it shows really quickly here. And we know that these this traffic is coming from the video description click. And we know that this is coming from the channel page click. So from this YouTube channel, lots of people are coming onto my website and we can see it clearly here. If we didn't have URL parameters set up, we wouldn't be able to see the quality of the traffic that comes through because with Google Analytics, what you can see is how that traffic performs in terms of time spent on site and things like that. That's data that Meta just doesn't contain, doesn't analyze, so this gives you a further deeper level of data analysis, which is really, really vital to your tracking and to your events management. So I really do hope that helps. Don't forget, get your events set up. If the dialog box doesn't open, install the pixel in another way and then troubleshoot that, whatever's going on. Get your URL parameters on your destination links so you can see that traffic within GA4 and that, if you do it correctly, is a one-time setup. It should be all you need. So don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.